Do you remember the prerequisite for a Chapman wave bimode is to go from a trough, a most identifiable low trough, low bar, and that's at 1336.30 on the 28th of January in the weekly chart, the week of the 28th. When I went to peak A, peak B, each higher peak gets, uh, each successively higher peak gets a capital letter a label. So it goes A, B, then it goes to C and a very quick D, and that goes to 1934. At a uh, week of the 9th of September, it drags itself down sharply. No, it slumps down and then has a reflex bounce because it still wasn't quite ready to come back to take out the most important low, which is at 1491.80 back in the week of the 1st of July. So it bounces back up and it goes peak A, peak B. That becomes a B minus when, it, when a peak fails and goes underneath the previous low bar starting point. That's called a failure pattern. It becomes a B minus in this case. It could be an A minus. It could be a C minus. Then it goes from the next low of 17, of 1535. It goes peak A, peak B, fails another B minus. So that's two. Now I believe that chart patterns are just a price point of human emotion. That's why they repeat so often. Number one, number two. That is why not only do they repeat. But to repeat in all different contexts, you can be looking at a gold chart, suddenly it's exactly the same as a chart of one of the stocks that has no relationship whatsoever. Why? Because in different time pre periods, there, there, is, there is an emotional response based on conditions of that time that produce certain failures or, 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 or breakouts, and that filters all the way through different chart patterns, uh, different stock sectors. But in this case, the gold sector it goes to the next lowest trough of seven of fifteen thirty five point forty. That's not C. That was a mistake. That was a successful test of the dreaded H pair. Oh, I knew that. I, I tried. I, I I did that on the original uh, uh, black background. So this is a successful test of the pattern that I call the lowercase dreaded H formation. Remember, this one went lower. I said that it should stop because it went lower in the methodology uh, that you can get on the CD introducing the Chapman wave methodology. It says if you break below the previous left side low, and that's the low of the week, the 30th of September, you're going to, you could rally, but you probably will not take out the previous high of 1850 in this case. But it didn't. It went to 1800.90 and then pulled back. Now it's had a successful rally. That rally says, yes, you can take out the previous high. It might not be by, be by very much. And this went to 17.90, but then you've got to be somewhat careful because this again is leg me possibly a th third PP. I'll be right back. Beth. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. 
I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. That's the number to call us. I was trying to get out just before I got cut off there at the, uh, for the commercial. Now we were looking at the GCZ12. Uh, Let me just do a couple of different things. So the GCC. On the, on the weekly chart, the MACD is still very strong at 95%. The MAC, sorry, the MACD is very strong. There has been volume to the upside. That's good. I like that. And the stochastic is very, very strong at 95%. So what I'm saying is that I believe that we're just a little bit overbought in the, in the gold contract. There could be a pullback. How we close today will be quite important because the, there is in the GLD. I believe it. Yeah. In the GLD, which is the gold contract that trades at one tenth the price of uh, spot gold, there's a left side, right side price time match, which didn't quite make it. It's missed it by about a, um, well, it missed it by a day, and it missed it by 171.91, by about three and a quarter points going to the 174 round number high back on the uh, 28th of February. However, the nine period moving average is holding well. Stochastic is pulling back, but it's still at 91%. The on-balance volume is telling me that there's a chance we could have, have this consolidation here. Uh, most importantly, it depends on how gold is being perceived. If it's being perceived as a harbinger of, of something important economically, then this cup pattern that we're looking at, the weekly GLD, this, this what I call the double cup pattern, says that there's a very good chance that if the technicals hold firm and gold is able, the GLD is able to hold above 160, 160... 160, 169.80 to 170.40, where it is right now. No, 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 it's lower than that. 170.35... Uh, by this afternoon, and even into tomorrow afternoon, by Tuesday at 4 o'clock, that would say, hey, there's a good chance you could have that spike to the 174 level. But the left side uh, price time match has, has almost run out in the weekly chart, and it's saying there needs to be a powerful move up. But if there is a powerful move up this week, into the 175.50 or higher area, there'll be a chap wave cup and later will break out and that'll be very positive and say, hey, you might be drawing all the rectangles you want, but
But 174 is the key level, and if it takes that out there, 175.46, the high of November in November of 2011, will be the next. Now, the other thing about this pattern is that very often, you remember I showed you how a rectangle pattern, it can last a lot longer than your patients. Remember I showed you the 120-minute chart just a short while ago in the E-minis? the 120-minute chart of the December S&P money. Well, that might be the pattern we're looking at here, that as it gets towards the 173 to 170, even if it just breaks out by a fraction, if it closes underneath 174, that could say, hey, trading range, it looks like it's going to break out, but that's a very strong resistance and could pull back. So that's the reason why... I would not, if you are in gold stocks and they are working, just raise your stops. I wouldn't get too carried away. Let the price tell you. This is a very important moment right now. My thinking is that there's a pullback. You know what? Thinking is one thing. I've got a peak F top in the 120-minute chart of, of the GLD, and I believe it's the same in the gold contract. But this rectangle formation, that's what you want to watch. If it takes out, if the GLD starts to take out, let me just to this fill color there. If it starts to take out, and I mean decisively, 170.06, the low of the week of the, no, the, uh, the, the low of the 17th of September, then this inverted, it's not really a Roman candle, it's very close, but that says that the, the opening of 168.03 on the 13th of uh, September of the GLD, that would be the target to the downside. So just a rectangle pattern for now. Let's see what happens. My thinking is that the market is consolidating. The TLT, let's just go to the TLT. I haven't got there yet. Bonds are right now up 31, 30 seconds. Well, look at this. The TLT is acting very well. This is A, B, C, D. This is E. And that's leg in the 120-minute chart. It's leg B in the daily chart, but look what happened. The weekly chart broke down. i got to watch this real closely. It went underneath that longer-term uptrend uh, support line. So I'm watching this very closely. Why? Because if the TLT fails to clear at any point in October, fails to clear, I mean clear, 127.72, that's the high of the week of the 31st of August. We could have a series of these H patterns as another arch formation is formed going down to test 109. And I'm just drawing this in now just to show you a technique that you might want to be thinking of using when I'll be teaching in my Master Trader series of how you can use different techniques if certain things happen. You just put it there and you wait to see, is this the pattern that's going to work? So, 877-927-6648. I've gone through most of what I'm looking at. I'll give other parameters as we move along. That's clearly what I want to look at. I'll look at the euro and the dollar when I get back. 877-927-6648. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and 
provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're a trader thirsty for knowledge, then we have the perfect event for you. Tom O'Brien will be hosting a live four-hour dynamic trading strategies workshop on September 29th in the Tampa area. This one-of-a-kind workshop takes place from 8 a.m. till noon and is completely free. We'll even be giving away almost $2,000 in door prizes randomly drawn from those that attend live. Along with diagnostic trading expert Daryl Martin, Tom O'Brien will teach you how to identify and set up your trades using dynamic trading strategies, and Daryl Martin will teach you his diagnostic trading formula, including the strategy, system, and style that gives you an edge in this market. For more information and to reserve your spot today for the September 29th free Dynamic Trading Strategies Workshop in Tampa, please visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't wait to act as space is limited. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. I'm doing a bit of work here uh, during the break on Apple's chart. Uh, this is with a white background. I'm very young with the black background. Let me show you a couple of things that I look at. First of all, there was a doji close. Um, that is where the candle looks like a little plus sign, and that was uh, from last week, where it closed at seven. Uh, it closed at seven hundred point oh nine and opened the week at six ninety nine point thirty five. Hey, that is really close. So that little doji there says, in my work, there's a, there, there are certain ways that I read the doji candle. But just to sum it up, unless the, the uh, Apple closes decisively above seven hundred five point ninety seven, and it has to do that this week and next week, you got to watch that because that's saying it's a stalling motion. This is not. This, I don't believe this is going to be a halfway marker. That candle right there was a halfway marker. So. It says, be careful, because 665 is the nine period experience moving average in the weekly. Well, how does that relate to what I'm looking at in the daily chart? Uh, the technicals are still very strong in the weekly. The MACD is not nearly as strong as it was when we went to the peak E round number high of 644. Uh, back was it April sometime, April, May. Well, the stochastic is at 94%, and that's very good. So it means that the, any pullback will come from the daily chart. Now, Apple's been one of the great, great, great stocks, and it still is a great stock. But something's going on with this chart. It's really struggled uh, over the last um, uh, two weeks, no, the last week and a half, to really make an impact by, by decisively pushing with large candles to the upside. So that says to me, okay, it's not a big deal, but it does say that watch it for a stalling motion. That's number one. Number two is there was a round number low um, of 700, uh, no, uh, uh, let me just check it out. I've got it on my other chart, right? 701, I think it is. Can't find it right now. But there was a round number, and it says, okay, watch that round number, 701, because if if there's a close, decisive close on the weekly chart below that round number, I'll find it in a minute. That means 
it's now a very strong barrier. That's, that's another thing. Now there's a left side, right side time price match, which I can only put in as a chart pattern that might work, um, and it might not work. Uh, left side, left side, right side. And that says there's a technique that I call the Chapman Way flat base restart. It sounds very complicated. All it says is that at a certain point, instead of the restart, the instant restart that we use at a peak D, there's another particular pattern. And because of certain conditions that the chart is telling you very clearly about, if those things show up, then what you do is you draw a straight line across, and the most important left side low bar, in this case 648.11, the low of the 22nd of August, that becomes a target, and becomes a target for when? It says the target is after a peak D or E is made, that particular decline should propel the stock lower and take it below the previous low of 648. And then, as soon as you think, oh, it's all over for Apple, there's a rebound back into that arch formation. That rebound tells you whether or not Apple is going to go much higher intermediate term or whether it's going to go lower intermediate term. So everything at this particular point is saying, hey, Apple, unless you can prove yourself by decisively breaking about 70507, at minimum we're looking at a consolidation of about 4% to 5%, but it could get a little bit worse. And it just could be time. It's still a fantastic stock. Nothing wrong with the monthly chart or even the weekly chart. It just says, hey, they've had a spectacular move. Even the weekly chart has the look of the Chapman Wave uh, cup and ladle breakout pattern, the cup formation that breaks decisively and goes to where? It goes to a peak D. It can go a little higher, but usually we look for at least a peak D, and that peak D says if you start to pull back, you can come back to the lip, to the breakout area. Where's that? 644. So there are a lot of things lining up for some kind of a pullback into the 640s if Apple isn't really clear about what it wants to do. Not only that, you've got that camel hump, that double camel hump that you I talk about in the um, in the in the daily chart. So that there again says. Be careful because the technicals are not as strong as they were previously. Monthly chart, as I say, is still great. Now, the 120-minute the chart says you've made uh, a, a very large inverted uh, cup, which is an arch formation. You've gone less or uh, more than – you haven't yet gone 50%. Uh, below that would be those candles over there. The moment it goes below 682, then it becomes more vulnerable to a right side pullback. So that's all I'm looking at, um, and it kind of matches what I'm looking at in the cues. Now I was asked a moment ago. You see, the cues are the same. This is a, a G a alternate wave, G or C, and I'm calling it a G right now in the Nasdaq, the QQQ. Uh, Power Shares Trust Series made a peak E right arm extension failure pattern with a dreaded H in the 120-minute in the chart. And there again, you've gone in the cup and ladle breakout pattern to, this could even be called the cup and handle. It's, it's Both of them would work because it decisively broke above 68.55 uh, in the queues uh, the week of the 7th of September, which is 69.55. So this is a doji peak E in the weekly, and that says, ah, be careful. The next two bars are going to be very important. That's two weeks in, 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 on the weekly chart. Now, I had a question in the den. If I would explain the, the chap wave count and len, I'm going to go to my black charts because I know it's done very clearly there, L-E-N. I haven't even talked about the volatility index uh, or, or the three bears. I spoke a little bit about the TLT, and that's the VIX that's Vixie, Bondi, and Dolly, the dollar. Uh, and we'll look at that in a moment. But look at Len. Len is in leg D up in the, in the daily chart. Oh, I want to go back to the euro dolly. Remember Ilka called the other day and I said, in the chat wave methodology, if the rule, the rules are very strict, you can, you can adjust your parameters as long as you're within the rules. And there's justification for it because we want to be as conservative to get to a peak D as possible because if we're wrong, all we've done is we've raised the stop. If it's only a peak C, it could still go higher. So I'm going to go there in a moment. But the question was, where are we in Len, Lenar, leg D up in the daily, 
should pull back. Here again, I'm looking for a pullback. A pullback to about, it's at 36.94. It made a high of 38.27. I think you will pull back between 15% and maybe even 20%. Doesn't matter uh, because it's still, the monthly chart is still very strong. So is the weekly. So I would say that it could pull back. 36.03 is a nine period exponential moving average. I wouldn't be surprised if it tests the 20, the 20, 20 period moving average of 34.64 over the coming, hmm, I'd say three to five sessions. And uh, the daily, I'm sorry, the weekly chart, there was almost a pattern that I, I was looking at, which is an unusual Chapman wave, um, flat base restart. I, I don't want to make it complicated. I'm calling this leg C. There's nothing technically that says it should not be leg C. So 34.31 is the nine period exponential moving average. Monthly chart, I have to call this, this, I'm calling this leg D slash A, as opposed to the ITB and many of the others, which I have to, I have no choice right now to call them strong leg A. Why? Because in the monthly chart, there was a peak C1, C2, it pulled back to 12.14, which was above the 11.93 low of, uh, the week of, of, of August of 2010. So I'm calling this leg D. I like to be conservative. How can I have a D, which is very, which is not negative, which says you've got to be, now you've got to be somewhat cautious, and a leg A, which says this is fantastic because it could still go to B, C, and D. I go step by step. I haven't got any signals yet to make any adjustment to this as a D slash A. That's the way it is. So I hope that answers the question. And then I had another question um, earlier on about, oh, the EUR USD. Here we go. So, folks, 877-927-6448 is the number to call. Love to hear from you. Now, let's go through this. I don't want to go through the whole thing. You can go back in the archives and hear my explanation. I've got the doji candle that was made. That was the other reason, 1.31681, 1.31716 on the 17th of September, fractionally higher, goes to a doji. Uh, now I can actually put that. No, I can't yet put the down arrow in. It's an alternate wave G, but I've got it as a D. And that says from the doji turnaround that was confirmed and underneath the nine period exponential moving average having filled the Roman candle from three days ago, that says my target is 1.2854. Remember, that's the target I said the other day would be if we took out the low of 1.29 of the 20th. So now what we're looking at is on a shorter term basis, even the euro dollar currency pair, EURUSD, which is trading at 1.29118, 1.29117, down 0.007. I hate those numbers. Why do they do that to me? Um, that says, be a little bit careful here. There's been basically like a single leg up, although it's gone to be, it really has the characteristic of a single leg A up. And the stochastic has a very sharp turnaround, but this is just two hours into the first trading day of the week. So now let's have a look and see what would negate this pattern. A close under 1.274, the nine period exponential moving ad would also put it below the, uh, this is the weekly chart we're looking at here, folks, if you're looking at Tiger TV. We'll put it underneath what was resistance, now is support. So to go underneath that support, I suspect if that happens, if it goes to 1.27, you'll see the stochastic at about, instead of 89%, you'll see it at about 76%. That'll be a negative to say, be careful, because we're going to have to watch the dollar, the DXY, which is showing a little bit of strength today. I, I, I still think at this particular point that the euro is a little bit strong on the shorter term. Uh, not right now. I'm talking about, I don't even want to say intermediate term. This just took about three weeks to four weeks at this particular point. But the dollar is rallying. The stochastic's rallying. MACD's trying today to cross positively. That's this, this, the, the yellow above the red line. Let me go to this on the white background for some of you who want to maybe print it out. I don't mind. Okay, there it is. So now this is a, a potential peak D. If, the, if by the end of the day or tomorrow... The fast-moving average breaks under and closes sharply under the nine-period moving average, the red line, the nine-period differential. That will put the stochastic somewhere around 71 to 69%. My guess is that it's going to back and fill inside that candle, the candle of, this is the euro dollar, uh, yep, uh, between 1.287 and 1.275 or 1.274. That's the candle of the 
11th of September. And that would match what we're looking at in the weekly chart. So let me ask. I think I've put it all together. Oh, dollar, I want you to do on the white background. See, the dollar, this is just a tiny little pathetic bounce compared to 84.10 down to the most recent low of uh, 78.60. So, yeah, if you looked at it very closely on a 120-minute chart, it looks great. But based on where it's come from, this is kind of pathetic, and I'm suspecting here that the rather count, the sideways consolidation in the market, I'm calling it that for now, will see the dollar have a tremendous amount of resistance between 80.39 to 79.65 and 80.68, the 200-period exponential moving average uh, resistance. Good. Now we've done some of that. Now let's go to questions. Um, I had a question... I'm forgetting the question was, oh, yes, Google. I had, I've got Google. Oh, this is a black background. I don't think I've got to it on the white chart yet. Google is racing to a leg F in the, in the daily. Really strong. Had a high today of 747.28, but an opened at 731 round number. If in the next two, three days it takes out 731, to the downside, or the MACD and stochastic are really strong, you can expect a 721.90, that's 722 to 720. The nine, nine period exponential moving average will be support. But so far, even on the 120 minute chart, I don't really have anything. Let me just do this very quickly. You can watch me do it. This is A. Oh, I always do that. Not another up arrow. That is. There we go. Okay, so this is peak A. Peak, oh, change the color. See, that's the reason why I hate this change in the color business. Might look great, but boy, it's a lot of work for me. B, C, that's a double top, so that's still C. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. So that's 713 run number on the 14th and 712, right? So here we go. Here comes, I'm pretty sure that's D, but I'm going to put that in as a D but it might be changed. 71674, 80, 56. 716, there it is. So that's C, D. Is that an A? Oh, man, this is going to take too much time. Uh, usually I can just see these at a glance. Uh, 25, 50, 58. Yep, that's, that's um, D. And that's, this is E slash A, because all the technicals are very strong, F slash B, and G slash C. So I suspect that from what we're looking at here, there's still individual, there are stocks that are acting very well. That's why it's a bifurcated market. I'm quite prepared. We're looking to go long. We're still looking at stocks that I want to buy. We're still looking at stocks that I want to short. Um... Oh, there's the music. I haven't had a single call. 877-927-6648. We do not want a bagel today. We want to have someone call at least one person. I can take, in fact, we could have a lightning round. Right at the end of the show, for the last four or five minutes, I'm going to make the parameters real clear right away when we come back, and then we can go straight to our lightning round. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Thank you. 
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Out. We have a caller on the line. We got Kevin from Sacramento, California. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi, uh, Kevin. You there? I'm pretty sure he's there. Sometimes people listen on the uh, internet and it takes a little. There's a little delay. Kevin, just yell, "I'm here!" when you're there. All right. Well. Um, Kevin wants to look, just say, keep, just talk over me if you're there. I, Kevin wants to look at Western Digital, WDC, as at 40.19, it's up three cents. Now, it made a peak E in the Chapman wave at, uh, that was on the, um, 17th of August. It's pulled back in a very steady down move. Now, what I look at when I see these charts, and it doesn't conform to an arch formation because it's taking its time coming down. If I'm able to draw, there was one aberration where it, it bumped, up, uh, bumped up there. If there's one thing I look at, it's to see the down channel. The slower the move down, consistent within a down channel, taking time and not really priced with fairly small price moves between the top and the bottom as you make lower highs and lower lows, says to me, okay, be careful because if there's a pop-up, just as you saw on the 14th of September where it was, the low was 40.56, it made a 10% move. It went to 44.30 that same day. Then it pulled back and closed at the low. You can see another one of these at any point. It could be any day now. They could get a spike. If it spikes about 41.25, then all of a sudden the body of this candle says, you know what, it could go to, it opened at 43.40. You could go even to 43.45, that 3%, that uh, 7% pop is quite possible. Uh, Kevin, you there? Uh, can you hear me, Basil? 
I certainly can. Do you have okay, a position? I, I was talking earlier. I, uh, we must have a technical technical issue. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Okay, but uh, all right. Are you long this? No, I was just. Uh, I, I've been following a lot of stocks that have uh, big gap gap ups, and then selling puts against them on the lower end. And um, since and this one had a big gap up in July. And, Folks, um, the gap the gap is at thirty two seventy six on the twenty uh, fifth of July. Gaps up the following day. The low is around number thirty eight. So make this just write this down. If it closes two out of three sessions below thirty eight, especially with the Doji low of thirty eight point fifty five on the twentieth, it's going to start to fill the gap. And thirty six ninety would be the place to see. What I would. What, you, you heard what I was talking about, about the down channel, and maybe you can see yes. it if you're looking at Tiger TV. Well, the weekly, the monthly has made a peak. No, it's in leg D with a possible peak D if this month it doesn't go above 45.94. But the monthly has got that V-shape. I call it the Groucho Marx eyebrows formation. And that says, yeah, it could have pop-ups, but you've got to be real careful because they're setting in place a trading range that, that has as a high 44.30. Probably strong resistance if it if it goes there and it pulls back. If it closes above it, then you've got to say, hey, this can retest the high 45.94. Most importantly, the downside, if it takes out that 38 level, then all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, you're looking at if this pattern unfolds correctly, correctly meaning that it's going to fill this very strong leg up that, that has no gaps, then it could get into the body of the, can, the candle of the week of the 27th. That goes all the way down to 31.16. But right now, what I would say to you is, you haven't got a position yet? No. So you can do one of two things. I personally would wait to see if it has any chance of trying in the next, by tomorrow afternoon or Wednesday morning, breaking about 41.23. If it does that, have patience. Let it run up, and as it's running, if it gets to 42.75, anywhere around there, you could start a small position with a bias towards the put side, towards the downside. That's the okay. way I would play it. But only small. Why? Because all of a sudden, this channel could become a very positive thing. So that's a start, and you know what? If call me again Wednesday first thing, if you if you're free, and we'll look at it again because by Wednesday morning, eleven o'clock, this thing's going to be probably giving us a chunk of information. And if it starts to break underneath Friday's candle, you can start a small position on the put side there as well. Hope Thanks. that helps. Thanks, Thanks for calling, Colonel. folks. Watch the thirteen thousand four eighty level as support on the Dow. Break that.